Take one. There's going to only be one take of this. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> the hub with bows of frari. To be rawry, for a ra 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 ra. Don we now our gay apparel, for a ra 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 ra. To the ancient rule tied rarel, for a ra 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 ra. Nope, no boundaries. No boundaries with Neil Riley, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Hashtag no boundaries. Hashtag, hashtag. Hashtag no six feet at all. Hashtag no social distance. Hashtag hashtag. Hashtag the hashtags. Hashtag holidays. Hashtag hash browns. Hashtag. <laughs> hashtag hashish. I'm oh, Jesus. I'm, That's I'm, a I'm, drug, I'm, kids. Don't take it. I think. I don't know. It, it might is. be legal now. Who knows? Anyway, the weather's getting colder, and so that can only mean one thing. Johnny, it's getting on towards Christmas. Johnny is wearing his fancy little sweater here. It's got uh, some geometric designs on it. Uh, for those of you in the audience that can't see, which is everybody in the audience, uh, it's uh, basically uh, it's a nice sweater. It's probably Gucci or something. But what's interesting, uh, Neil, I was in Houston uh, earlier this week, and uh, now you're there. But we missed each other. Actually, I was in Houston, and you were in Austin. And on the day I went to Austin, you came to Houston. And the day you left Houston, I left Austin to come to Houston. Oh, my God. Are, are we trying to avoid each other? I'm not. I'm trying to get as close to everyone as possible. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, no. Hashtag, hashtag. I forgot. Dang it. Okay. Well... Today, uh, we're going to be chatting about uh, Christmas movies, what makes a Christmas movie, and uh, what uh, some of our favorite films in that genre are. Is everybody excited? Not all at once, yeah. please, please, yeah. please. Meh. Nah. <laughs> okay. I am. I, I, I appreciate that, uh, that tepid response. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, okay. let me throw it out... Uh, uh, to you, Ian, what would you say uh, for you defines a Christmas movie? Um, hmm, that is a good question. Uh, well, it definitely takes place on or around or during Christmas. That, okay. That's definitely okay. the big one. Okay, so Christmas has to be uh, a date associated with the movie. I, I mean, it doesn't. Yes and no, because I, I would say it, it should have to do something with the plot. The plot should revolve around Christmas. No. If the plot doesn't and it just happens to be on Christmas, it's not necessarily a Christmas movie, but at the same time, it is a Christmas movie. It's, I don't know. It's, there's, there was weird rules around it. Okay, so what you're saying is if you can take the plot of the movie and move it to any other date, then it's not a Christmas movie. Essentially, no. Uh, yeah, because, it, like, say you take a movie that takes place on Christmas and then you remove the entire holiday of Christmas away from it and the plot does not change, that would be a... At, at the very most, a weak, a very weak Christmas yeah. movie. Could the could the movie stand by itself if it didn't have Christmas implemented in the plot? Okay, okay, Neil, how do you feel about that? I think for the most part, I would agree. I mean, yeah, obviously, I think a Christmas movie needs to revolve around the season of Christmas. Um, but yeah, if if you take the Santa Claus and you remove the Christmas aspect of it, you don't essentially have a movie other than a guy killing someone on his roof. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and, then, so. and then stealing his identity, right? So you right. really, turns oh, into a movie. Into really a, does turn into a horror movie. That, and it's yeah, that, would, that would become a different yet might be better movie. I like the Santa Claus. I would love to see Tim Allen as a murderer slash yes. identity theft. 
I, I would love that too. Just a movie as Tim Allen as a serial killer. Yeah. Playing Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah. It could be like a reboot of Home Improvement, I guess. <laughs> he just he he, bury, he buries all the corpses in the yep. walls of the yep. houses he builds. Yep, that's this that's exactly so, right. How did this get so dark so quickly? Starring Bob Ross. <laughs> hey everybody, you know what time it is? Bob it's Bila. tool time. <laughs> now we're gonna show you how to hide a corpse. Yep, yep. <laughs> Here's the here's the tool you use to drill directly into the cranium. Mm-hmm. I like to use the four pound hammer to break a skull. You can swing it faster, and your arm doesn't get tired. <laughs> Parents at home, <laughs> you should definitely be letting your kids listen to "I Don't Give a Flick" every week. We this, talk about very civil and well, we PG do, we rated do have the things. Explicit, explicit. So you know, is there actually an explicit tag anywhere on our podcast at all? Because we don't say it every episode. We uh, did at the beginning, but we, right. I mean, there's the, some. All, all the yeah. episodes are marked mature, so are they? Yeah, they should be, yeah. Um, they you know. should be. If you they don't should know, be. now you know. Yeah. I mean, now you know. If you haven't, if you if you <laughs> if you've listened, if this is uh, your first time listening, I I understand you get a free pass. But if you're a consistent listener, then yeah, you know. Mm. Uh, um. So okay, so yeah, I mean, I think it, it's pretty easy to establish. What did did you already say, Gary? What you thought? <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I think a Christmas movie does I, it does revolve around the date. I mean, okay. you, it's, it'd be like having a like Independence Day that takes place in like on March thirteenth. Like yeah. that would be it stupid. Independence Day has nothing to do with July fourth at all. It really doesn't. <laughs> Are you kidding? Do you remember Bill Pullman's Pax yeah. Pullman's Bill Pullman, Bill Pullman, Pullman yeah, yeah. speech? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Today we declare <laughs> our independence. I mean, yeah, but you you could just have it on any other day. It's like you were bringing up a, a Christmas Carol earlier. Yeah, yeah. Isn't this something that you could? Yeah, you know, a Christmas Carol. Could it be could, on New? Could it be on New Year's Eve? Yeah, you know, uh, a Christmas, yeah, any you know, day, a New Year's Eve story. Yeah, or whatever. Whereas, like a, a story like uh, or Carol, like Groundhog Day, that has to take place on Groundhog Day. I mean, okay. And See, we're gonna start. Getting, we're gonna we're gonna start deep. mixing genres and episodes because this okay. can go back into right. our time travel and paradox episode. Um, so uh, let's let's oh, okay. let's try maybe this here. is our time travel paradox episode. Oh, <laughs> welcome to August. Oh 5th. my god! <laughs> is that when that happened? I don't know. Okay. Yes. He just, yes, it was. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. Anything can happen at Christmas. <laughs> yes, at Christmas. It's Christmas. Don't you believe in miracles? No. Oh. No, I don't. Oh, that's depressing. Okay, so I'm not a Christian. Okay. Okay. So that, I guess, is another good element that you'd need for a Christmas movie. Like, it's got to be kind of about Christmas, too, right? Or have it somewhere. It ha- it, it has to be somewhere stuck into the plot, really ingrained in there. I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be pretty deep. I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily, oh, this is about Christmas Day, but it has to be at least around the, the festivities of mm-hmm. Christmas or someone trying to make it home on time or... Well, I mean, like... Planes, trains, and automobiles. Just to, about to bring yeah, that up. To, but, take, yeah. to take an example, you know, that's right. people trying to get home on Thanksgiving, which right. is, I believe, the only Thanksgiving movie that was ever made. There's other ones, I'm sure, that were. Yeah, there's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, there's yes, Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah, I was about right, to say, okay. yeah, Ian, how many of those, how many <laughs> movies so shitty they're great? <laughs> how many of those movies were there? I, I don't think that's the right title of this podcast. Whatever. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> but I mean, like, uh, you know, like, it, it's got to be about, like, Christmas. So. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I have one exception. I won't say it now, but just whenever we get to it, I, I know of one exception, one movie that, like, if you take the plot and take Christmas out of it, the movie is exactly the same, but yet it's still such a Christmas movie. Uh, I'll, when, whenever the nativity we get story, it, oh, I'll talk about it, but yeah, <laughs> okay, and just, All right. and just uh, I guess, uh, a preview or a okay. tease. But anyway, go on. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I think um, I think we're probably going to all break all these rules when we uh, talk about oh, our favorite like, movies, anyway. Yeah. So probably. I mean, like th- this whole section right here is moot, so you can just skip forward to twenty-seven minutes and fifteen seconds. Um, is that the, the, the end podcast. of the podcast? Yeah. Are you are you gonna are you going to edit that specifically to end at twenty-seven minutes and fifteen seconds, no, or to I, edit to that? I'm, that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep looping the intro song until it gets to 27 minutes. So, so it's gonna be 27 minutes of them listening to us <laughs> singing yes. rah 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 yeah. rah rah. Yes, rah. it's going to be wonderful. Oh, that's such a great Christmas movie. Um, Is it though? I mean, it doesn't take place entirely on Christmas. Yeah, th- 
Oh, oh, we're oh, about to get oh, into this. We're getting all right, fuck it. We'll get it. We'll, we'll get into it exactly <laughs> right now at this very second. Um, okay, so those are the variables that make a Christmas movie. I think that's g- the general consensus across mm-hmm. the board from the panel for this week. Um, okay, let's let's get right into it. Let's let's go down and um, I'm not going to go individually. If you've got a Christmas movie that is considered a Christmas film by most people, but you don't think it is, then go ahead and throw it out. Um, I'm going to go on ahead and let's uh, let's. I'm. This is going to be a short one. I'm going to start with a Christmas story, Gary, since I actually just saw it again for the umpteenth time mm-hmm. last night. Um, uh, awesome, by the way. Draft House, Alma Draft House. For those of you that aren't familiar, um, uh, they're doing. A bunch of they're not doing the quote alongs like they do every Christmas, but they are doing like the movie viewings where you can go and they give you like three or four items that were you know yeah. prevalent in the film. I and saw they were it's doing fun. it's it's cool. Huh? Okay, well, I saw that they were doing that. Uh, what, yeah, what they had National they Lampoon National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I'm, I'm gonna go see that next week. Um, they did Elf. They we saw Elf the other day. Christmas Story. Um, Die Hard's up there, um, which is another one we'll get to. Uh, there are a couple other ones. I, think it's a wonderful life is supposed to be coming in a couple weeks uh closer to christmas eve anyways um but so a christmas story gary i don't know if you were joking or not um because if you weren't i'm about to school your ass oh man but, okay <laughs> well uh, let's start with you go ahead christmas well, story go yeah i mean christmas story i think is a, a classic christmas movie i was just saying that oh, okay based on our uh, initial um points that we brought up because uh, it, it doesn't take place entirely over christmas because it's got kind of a yes it a, does a, well it has a long longer stretch time you know it, it's, it takes like, place. it's, it's a, w- a week before but it's <laughs> the entire the entire basis of the film is yes to show it's supposed to show the family it's supposed to show the everyday lifestyle of a family from the midwest in the whatever 40s? the 30s or 40s or whatever it was and about the lead up to christmas mm-hmm. and about the the main and the main protagonist his desire to have the red rider uh, excuse me red rider bb gun right and you'll shoot th- your eye out shoot your eye out kid um ho, ho, as long as ho. there's a mall santa it, it's it's starting and there's a mall santa exactly there's a, there's there's mall santa the the I see what you're saying. Yeah. But yeah. the build up I see that's the thing is I don't think a Christmas movie necessarily has to be the entire story is on like Christmas Eve to Christmas Day. Okay. I think it can still be uh, a couple days or a few weeks before as right. long as they're building up to Christmas and all the events leading up are to Christmas events. Okay. You know what I mean? That's uh, just it, my it, that's it, my it does climax on Christmas, so yeah. <laughs> just like my ex wife. Oh, no. Never been married uh, before. I no. lied. I'm sorry. Just Never been like divorced it. either. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Surprisingly bat- enough. I was going to say batting a thousand, but I'm not one. Batting zero. Either. So batting zero. Didn't even take the mound, <laughs> people. Take- <laughs> He's still on the bench. D- is it? It's not the mound. That's where the pitcher does. <laughs> Tune into Didn't our take sports podcast. <laughs> I, uh, there's no crying in podcasting. <laughs> Featuring not Gary. Not Gary. <laughs> not Gary. Um, so I don't know, uh, I- Ian and Neil, I mean, would you guys agree or, or disagree on that one with Christmas? No, movie to Christmas it, movie? It's in the title. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they run it 24 hours a day for like a week. I think it's a Christmas yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. On TNT. It, it's uh, in the title, like Christmas, it's a Christmas story. Yeah. And, and not only that, but like, I mean, you could say a Christmas story out of context. Some people would be like, oh, okay, well, it's a story, but no, that's actually not the case at all you say a christmas story out of context and people are like yeah. oh yeah that one movie what and also here's a here's a side a sidebar really quick for a film like that there's tons of iconic films that are just they're either a cult classic or they're a holiday classic or maybe they're a one-time one-hit wonder blockbuster or something where those actors you don't really see them you'll see them in other movies but you don't see them in very much none of them get much bigger than the role that they had in that one film. And that's what I always kind of felt sad about with the cast from a Christmas story is I, I mean, I know those actors have been in other things, but I, I, I love the dad, love the kid, love the guy that was the narrator. Um, you know, the mom was hilarious. Um, I don't really recall ever seeing those guys in anything. And I don't know if they got typecast or maybe they just caught a bad break. Maybe they quit acting. I don't really know the, their backstory over mm-hmm. the last 40 some odd years since the film came out. Um, but if you guys were an actor, like a, a really big name actor, would you want to have a kind of a middling, you know, like a mediocre career where you got, you know, 
side roles here and there, but your career lasted 20 years? Or would you want to have one iconic role that paid you a bunch of money one time, plus the royalties, obviously. Oh, yeah. I'm and sure they get a big check every 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 year. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. But what would you personally rather do, Gary? What about you? I mean, if, if you had the choice, if you were, okay. if you were a so you're asking me A-list actor. Would I want to work really hard for 20 years and get kind of crappy roles? But or you'd still be getting... I mean, so you look at a guy like like Stanley Tucci or something, yeah. okay? You look at um, oh, we, John Lovitz. We've brought him yeah. up multiple times. I'd love to have a cup of coffee with I that would. Man. I would. John, if you want to come on the show, come on. But they've only really been supporting roles, and they've been in yeah. big movies, but... They really, they've never a leading man, you know, and uh, they've made, I mean, they're millionaires. They've carved out a nice niche for themselves mm-hmm. for sure. Um, would you want to have that type of, I guess, that type of career? Or would you want to have something like the kid who played Ralph, the guy that, the kid who played Ralphie or the guy that narrated, you know, his, his older version? Yeah. Um, um, well, and do it one time. Quick side note, Ralphie looked almost exactly like my brother Tom when he was a kid, so really? that was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, uh, and I think nowadays, um, having like a... Because you don't need a big studio to make a production of a movie anymore, so sure. even if you're only like kind of a, you know, a, a, a mid-tier actor, you, can, you could still be like, hey, I want to make this really dramatic role or this movie, and like I'll finance it myself for, you know, Because of your star dollars. power, and yeah. you, you have the, yeah, you have the doors open, that's yeah. for sure. And so, but, so but I that's think that the, would give you a lot of options. That's not the question, though. The question is, which one would you rather do? Which one would I rather do? Right, um, personally, if you had that option. You know, I, I like to keep busy and do things, so I would probably do the uh, the long career that never went anywhere, because, you know, I'm, I'm used to that in my life anyway, so <laughs> might as well keep that going. Well, they still, they still went somewhere with these other these other actors, you know, and I'm, and I'm sure... I'm sure the people in Christmas Story, they, I mean, I've seen the dad and the mom, especially in other things, too, um, but neither of them were ever, at, they never had a role as big as right. the one they had in a Christmas it, Story. A, a seminal role, really. Exactly. There yeah. you go. Exactly. Uh, Neil, what about you? I mean, I don't know. I kind of feel like I would like to have that longer career, like something okay. a little more steady, a little more constant, um, maybe not quite as big or memorable, but, you know, ride it out for 30, 40 years. Yeah, you yeah you'd totally be okay playing the sidekick to an Adam Sandler or a Will Ferrell or a, you know whoever for for all those movies. Yeah, I mean no, I mean that's yeah that's, for sure. Yeah, that's a good. I mean that's a good point. I mean you you'd be making consistent money. You'd be doing something you loved. Hopefully, um, I hope most actors enjoy acting. <laughs> if not, they should. You know. <laughs> uh, Ian, what about you? Man, Hollywood is so brutal. I, I like I would hate to just be one really famous person to not get any work like i mean if you take people like the fawns or uh seinfeld actors or like mostly jason alexander sure. that like everywhere they go that they're just like oh hey you're you're that person yeah you're george costanza yeah you're you know yeah and well which uh, which is like an iconic character but like i mean him but like both both people i mentioned like that they, they hate be known as that guy right and uh yeah it, that just seems kind of depressing to me yeah i think the guy that plays no uh, how, or that played uh played biff in back to the future doesn't he carry a little card around with him that he gives to people when he's like hey yes i am that guy i'm not an asshole in real life please don't bother me thank <laughs> he, you. you know he's actually <laughs> he's so actually carved out a nice little career for himself yeah if you notice he's he's been in um God, he did Gridiron Gang and We Are Marshall, but he's been done a ton of other movies too. But I've seen his face, mm-hmm. you know, a, a fair amount over the last twenty some odd years since uh, BTF was over. Um, I don't, I don't know, man. I actually kind of feel I would, I would go the, I would go the latter. I'd, I kind of want to have that one iconic role mm-hmm. and just do it. If those are my only two options, right. if I could never break mediocrity and become a leading man on something, right? I feel like I would do that, use the money and royalties, and obviously mm-hmm. live comfortably continue working but try to try to you know ingrain myself in another aspect of film uh-huh. i would try to be a you know, big time producer like you said the indie route direct my own stuff maybe right. write um maybe go another route and try to make my card in some other in some other area you know i mean ian you brought up uh, henry winkler as the fonz uh you know he did a ton of producing for adam sandler's films and uh, mm. happy madison productions after I mean, after Happy Days was over, we didn't hear from him for. He had a lot of decades. trouble. Nobody would hire he him. Did. 
He did, and then he started. He used some of that money, started producing all these, all the Happy Madison films. I know he wasn't like he wasn't like their big benefactor or anything, um, but he he came in and he helped out with a lot of those movies. And from that, he developed a really good relationship with Adam Sandler. And he's in, he's probably at least in you know a half a dozen of Sandler's films at this point. And probably, I would say for our generation and uh, what's the generation after us that was two thousand Z. And- Z, Generation Z, uh, they probably, most of them at least, don't remember the fonts. Now, we do because, we, you know, hey. it's on TV land or, you know, there were reruns on TBS for years in the 90s. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, he they recognize him as the coach from Waterboy, the dad, the grandfather from Click, um, just, yeah, you know, a myriad of, of Sandler films. So we, we should do a podcast that just talks about Adam Sandler movies, the good and the bad. I think that'd be an interesting one. Somebody make a note of that. <laughs> I, I will actually make a note. Okay, I would. T- I would totally want to do that. Do an Adam. And um, I, I think just to go back a little bit, uh, Johnny called Back to the Future BTF. BTF. Uh, I wasn't. BTF. I wasn't going to correct him. I was going to let it go. Well, no. I just. Like, well, I that, mean, that's a weird acronym. That's just what kind of stuck out to me. It's true. I guess. I guess it is. B double T F. Yo. B-W- what are you doing tonight? Yo, I'm watching B double T F two. B double T F two, bro. Yeah. B T squared F. Boom. Boom. Counted. <laughs> it's been counted. Uh, so I put a little note on the itinerary saying, do an Adam Sandler podcast. Excellent. I really would like to get someone on here who, and Ian, I don't know, and I don't know how you feel about Adam Sandler films, but I, there's I not many. Okay, you don't. Okay, so great. So maybe we'll have you on. <laughs> Honestly, like, even his, even his new shitty stuff, with the exception of, like, Jack and Jill and the cobbler i've honestly i still enjoy his really bad ones i've seen his he had that he had that big contract with netflix where he did like five movies for them oh yeah david spade chris rock Mm -hmm. um and kevin james might have been in one or two and rob schneider and they came in and he just did a bunch of movies for them exclusively notice he didn't have any come out in theaters over the last couple years and uh they're they're stupid as hell and the reviews are horrible the cobbler was one of them but I still what, love. What it. was the one with David Spade where he goes to Hawaii and brings the wrong girl with him? Oh, the 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 Duke wrong. Over? No, it was the wrong Jenny yeah. or something. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. We might be getting off topic. I don't. Anyways, know. it doesn't matter. <laughs> moving on. Moving on. <laughs> so, so like like I told Gary ahead of time, I gave him fair warning, but you know he was schooled. So, what are you gonna do, Gary? I'm sorry. Christmas I, Story is a Christmas movie. I think I think I agreed with that at the start, didn't I? I can't. Was, uh, <laughs> can we play the tape back? No. No. Okay. You, no. I mean, do you want to edit that in? It's okay. up to you. Yeah. Um, if Christmas is in the title, it's a Christmas movie. I'm sure if we really thought about it, we could. I don't know. I'm sure there's a movie out there with Christmas in the title somewhere that you can take I'll, Christmas I'll out and still be a right movie. Now. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> uh, Neil, what about you? Any any movie that pops into your head that? Uh, that you might think if you took the the Christmas out of the story, it would still just be a normal movie. So to me, it's kind of weird. And I may be the only person who does, does this, but pretty much every year I watch the original lethal weapon. Yeah. And it takes place in the Christmas season. And to me, okay. it's a Christmas movie in the fact that I watch it at Christmas every year, but you can take it out and it'll still be a great movie. Okay. So you're, you're saying that it's a Christmas movie because of, your personal tradition on that more than like, and the fact that it happens over the Christmas season, the subjective aspect part of the equation then is is the question. It is. Okay. We didn't establish that at the beginning. So I was just asking. (laughs) Film is art. It's all subjective. Oh my God. We're not, let's have a pot. Johnny, make a note on the podcast. My dad and I used to watch Schindler's list every Christmas. (laughs) It's a Christmas. Christmas. Oh my goodness. Have you seen Hotel Rwanda? <laughs> you haven't truly seen it until you watched on Christmas Eve. My goodness. My goodness. That scene gracious. where they drive over the dead corpses. Uh, no. That's mm. no. Um, okay. All right. I mean if we're gonna if we're gonna if we're gonna take that in, then then I guess I guess yeah, that's fine. The, the final scene in Lethal Weapon is them celebrating Christmas, I think. True, but I mean, you know, there's there's thousands, uh, there's tens of thousands of movies that that do that. You know, they if they're based over a year, you know, there's Forrest a couple Gump. scenes. Yeah, Forrest Gump has. Wait, does Forrest Gump have Christmas stuff in it? I don't think they do. I know it's got New Year's. You it does know have what? New Year's? I don't think they have. I Christmas. don't think they do. Have. Yeah, you're right. They have what? New Year's in New no. York with Lieutenant Dan. That was just New Year's. It wasn't Christmas. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't think. Yeah. Surely there's. Mm-mm. I don't. Think... Is there a Christmas scene in Forrest Gump? 
I don't think so. I, I watched it about a month I'm ago, and I don't recall back. there being a. Yeah, I don't remember there. I don't recall there being. Wow, a Christmas you know, I portion. think, I think you're right. Okay, shut me up. <laughs> there you go. Twice, Tw- twice you've no. had your ass handed to you. No, <laughs> the first. Oh, okay. go ahead. John. <laughs> you're like, I don't care. I'm not getting into this. All right, uh, uh, Ian. What about you? Okay. Uh, well, I've got one that is. I definitely consider a Christmas movie. Uh, okay. Not a lot of people really think about it until you, until you start to think about it, and then you're like, "Oh yeah." But okay. if you take the Christmas out of it, it's not a Christmas movie. So it's like it's like a Schrodinger's Christmas movie. It's it it is, but it's sure. not. Okay. Batman Returns. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, I mean, I think a lot of people forget about it because it's such a horrible movie. No, not, I, they forget about it because it's Christmas. What? Is Neil, it? I'm gonna have to disagree Neil, with I'm you. gonna have to ask you to shut your dirty whore mouth. <laughs> Danny DeVito cannot save every movie. Oh, <laughs> Look, you're hey, wrong. he saved Hercules. So, are you saying Hercules is a terrible movie without what? Danny DeVito? I'm saying oh, Hercules. Her, I'm saying Hercules uh, wouldn't uh, be the Disney best Hercules? Disney movie of all. Hang on, I'm, I, I'm saying Hercules wouldn't be the best Disney movie of all time if Danny DeVito didn't play Phil. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. If, it, if he wasn't in it, it would just be, you know, top ten. Okay. So. That's Phil's boy. I forgot about that's that. That's Phil's boy. I don't think that's how it sounds. You know, either like, of our impersonations. <laughs> me with with my, like, old cult bad shitty movies, when he said Hercules, I originally thought, like, the 1983 Lou Ferrigno piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> or Hercules in New York with Arnold Schwarzenegger oh from yes. the 70s. Yes, exactly. That one was better than the Lou Ferrigno one. That's for sure. Oh my God, uh, Neil! I will have to say that I I do think that Batman Returns is a pretty good movie. It, it's That's one of the best shameful. Batman movies. Though, though I do respect your opinion, no matter how wrong it may be. <laughs> 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 though you are correct that it being a Christmas movie, like it has no bearing on the actual story. It could take place at any yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, I would I would have to I would totally have to agree with that. Yeah, if you pulled Christmas out and put it during, you know, March thirteenth. I mean yeah. it doesn't really make sense for the penguin to come out, you know, around fourth of July, but you know <laughs> <laughs> Hey, New yeah. York's always cold, baby. It's Maybe Gotham. F- all right. Fe- yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. What? Gotham, New York. <laughs> Same thing. Same fucking thing. And I, w- I would like to point out that uh, that was probably um, uh, Tim Burton at his best because he had that still a unique flair to him and, and flavor, but yeah. he hadn't gone like total crazy yet. He hadn't gone corporate and everything yeah. had become so commercialized yeah. with him. Yeah, and I can't, I can't remember who did the, the third well, Batman was, movie. He was getting there, but yeah. Oh, God. Wasn't it like it wasn't Brett Ratner? Was it Steven S- Soderbergh? I, I, anyway, the, I they, they started to just really Batman. go off the deep end. Because the third one was Batman uh, forever. forever. Yeah. Okay. Batman Forever's director With was... the awesome Seal soundtrack. Yeah. Kiss <laughs> by... No, that was... Joel uh, Schumacher. Joel Schumacher, I'm sorry. No, it wasn't... But that was in... Um, that was 95. No, but the one with the Seal soundtrack was... Uh, that was Forever. The movie. Uh, yeah, it was Forever. Oh, that was... No, it was the fourth movie because it had Arnold Schwarzenegger in it, right? Yeah, that was well, Batman and Robin. That was... That was the- yeah, that is Batman and Robin, but the Seal soundtrack is Batman Forever, for sure. Like... Is it? Absolutely, 100%. All right, let's look. Okay. Uh, yes, Batman <laughs> Forever, correct. Gary, three, three t- thrice I, 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 times I just, has been handed to thee. Should I just leave this podcast? Am I done here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have another movie that, again, if you take the, the Christmas out of it, it okay. it's unchanged, but right. there's so much Christmas in it at the same time that it's, right, it's so good. It? Movie, um, it, it, I'm actually blanking on. <laughs> um, okay, the eyes wide shut. I honestly didn't even remember that being a Christmas movie. It's been there's about ten years since I've seen it, but there's a Christmas tree or Christmas lights in every single scene. I remember the uh, lights. I don't remember the tree though. Of course, no, I was there's a tree really young and, and really baked when I watched it last. So. Very uh, yeah, yeah, no, and, like I was just watching it before we started recording tonight, just to like make sure that's correct. And nice. yeah, every single scene has a tree or lights. Okay, because I so it's I'm, it's just so Christmas. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So all right. So so uh, I'm we're, we'll we'll go into. Uh, 
Fuck it. I, I'll just say it. Okay, so Die Hard. I, I think we're, we're all thinking Every, that at yeah, one point. Top Christmas movie, right? It's, how is it the top Christmas movie? It's not. It's a... Good fucking movie, and I watch it during Christmas. I watch one Christmas movie every day during the from right the day after Thanksgiving uh-huh. to December twenty fifth. Right. What's the last one you watch? Uh, it's Wonderful Life. Okay. It's Christmas what's, Eve. What's the one before that? Uh, Die Hard is usually yeah. right because it's that. not usually, Christmas yeah. until Hans Gruber falls off the thirty second floor of the Nakatomi <laughs> Plaza. <laughs> Gary, Christmas starts in Austin on November eighth when Magic ninety five point five starts its twenty four seven Christmas music. Magic 95 does do that. And I hate and it when they do early. that because I force myself to not listen to yeah. it for like over two weeks. But back but. to the main issue. Die Hard <laughs> is a Christmas movie. It's not a Christmas movie, man. It happens during Christmas. If you pull Christmas out of that movie, it's they could be having an end of the quarter party. Like the co- the company party that they're having when yeah. Ruber and the terrorists come in and they take it over. They could just be having a company party and nobody would know the difference. The only thing that makes it a Christmas movie is it does happen... During Christmas, uh, during Christmas, yeah. and there's there's some decorations. That's it, though. Uh, <laughs> there's a line where uh, Hans Gruber says to line. one of the guys, he's like, "It's Christmas. It's a time of miracles." When they're like asking how to open the vault, couldn't some... they just cut that line out? And the movie would stay the same. No. Also, Bruce Willis it mentions say... eggnog. It, if you <laughs> if you I add okay. or subtract anything from that movie, you only weaken it. I think that movie could be just as strong without the Christmas element. Nope. It's, well, it's not then, a Christmas there would be film. there would be no party. First of all, w- no, but that's Christmas. what I'm saying this is you could have party. no way, man. You, you don't have, have par- blowout parties. You could like have that a blowout a quarter. Yes, that you, doesn't happen. There's there's plenty of Chris. There's plenty of office parties. <laughs> hey, for, we close the Anderson account party. <laughs> there you go. Hey, if that's a multi-million or billion-dollar deal, that's reason to have a party. I would say no. You got to save it for Christmas. No. Wrap up, up the year. Wrap Die up Hard the, is the a fantastic year. film, and I do watch it every Christmas, but it is not a Christmas movie. I think that the fact that you watch it every Christmas kind of denotes it's yeah. a Christmas no, movie. No, no, no. Yeah. That's that's Neil. Dude, we said so we said is beans. We said subjective reasoning is that part of the equation. You guys said yes, and I agreed with you. But okay, with it well being then, su- with it being oh, subjective, you got oh, if you allow me to finish, I can tell you for Johnny sub- being subjective. That's Neil's thing. That's Neil's opinion. That's what Neil wants to do. That's not part of my equation. Okay. So it doesn't well, uh, it doesn't apply to me. Okay. Well, if you want your equation to be wrong, Johnny, that's fine. Okay. I mean, you you can everyone right. can be wrong. That's okay. fine. With the All exception right. of me. All right. Neil, would you say that Die Hard is a Christmas movie? Even though Bruce Willis has come out and says it's not a Christmas movie, he's wrong, and it is a Christmas movie. <laughs> the, the, Thank you. The Thank star you. of the Thank fucking you. movie says it's not a Christmas the star film, of the movie and didn't you're ignoring write the that. The star of the movie didn't write the script or produce it or direct it. Yeah, or watch it. Absurd. <laughs> Absolutely also, absurd. Uh, let's talk about Die Hard 2 now. Okay. Uh, it gets a bad rap. <laughs> But it's not is, it's not a horrible movie. It's saying a diehard fucking podcast. Let's talk about Adam Sandler really quick. Okay? No, no. All right, let's talk about John Lovitz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The brave I, little toast. I, I okay. All right. Agree to dis uh, Ian, so Ian, now uh, you're on board with that. It's a Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, not as much so. Like, I'm not as crazy about it as everybody else is. And uh, actually the fact that well, everybody is so crazy about it. it makes me like I'm kind of done with it. But don't yeah, be it, that guy, it, it, don't be that. Don't be a hipster. <laughs> yeah, it was cool before it was cool. You don't think it's good because everybody likes it because the masses love it. Don't I be that guy. Come it. on, I can't uh, help it. Ian, oh. you know what? I'm gonna fuck you. I'm gonna move to Portland. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> Just I'm going to fuck <laughs> I mean, take me out to dinner first. I don't, I don't know how Vanessa would feel about that. But <laughs> mm. uh, so I'm gonna say we. Uh, uh, yes, y'all, y'all. Yes. Hey, 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 you three can say it's a Christmas movie. It's not, it, but it is. It's not. It is. I mean, in the household I grew up, and we, we always watch Die Hard every Christmas. So. Uh, I'm going mm. to post on our Facebook. A, a question that says, "Is Die Hard a Christmas movie?" Post it right now if you want to. Yeah. I, don't care. I need to figure out how to do that because I'm not tech savvy with the Facebook. <laughs> I do believe to Facebook cre- took away the poll section, so they did. Wait, did they? Yeah, yeah. You can still create a what post. What the though. fuck? Okay, I'll be. That's so dumb. You can create it, it, a post, it, but you won't. Did a poll it. the other day? Really? That's ridiculous. If, if you think Die Hard is a Christmas movie, then give us a one of them smiley faces. And if you think it's not a Christmas movie. 
um, then give us give us the angry the emoji. angry face, the angry emoji. <laughs> okay, everybody uh, got that. Let's let's th- let's throw another one out there. I, I think I, I brought in Die Hard because it was one we were going to talk about anyways. Um, but Gremlins, Gremlins, yes. Okay. Um, Gremlins does happen on Christmas. Yep, it, it happens. I don't remember if it's Christmas Eve or December twenty third or something, but but it, the entire thing is is based in a town that is getting ready for the holidays, even though they don't really mention it at all. Like they say, oh, it's Christmas time, but nothing's like the oh. whole reason he gets the Mogwai in the first place is because of Christmas, a Christmas gift to his son, a last minute Christmas gift. Yep. Hmm. So okay, go on, Johnny. I still saying? no no no. I mean, that good point. Good point. <laughs> Uh, it could be his birthday. Yeah, I, I mean, Christmas has like real no no real bearing to that story. <laughs> no, not really. It's, it's more of a setting than it's anything. It's still an entertaining film. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I mean, it's it, that's a debatable one, you know, like Die Hard. No. <laughs> Neil, what do you think? I mean, I love Gremlins, and I think it's a Christmas movie. You would. Ugh. Now, I, I think... Such a hipster. I God. think Gremlins 2... <laughs> uh, Gremlins 2 is a bit more Christmassy because they're locked in the building and they have that big... Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. The big party with all the with all the Gremlins. Yeah. I think it's Towards Christmas or is it New Year's? Did I think I'm, that was New Year's on that one. It, I'm doing it again. I'm force gumping all over here. But, okay. but that's... I was about to say, that's the same yeah. thing, though. Yeah. Gremlins 2 also, you know, wasn't as good as the first one, so... It was certainly a different tone. It was, indeed. Ian, what about, what about you, Gremlins? Uh, well, I have a, uh, confession to make. You've never, uh, seen, you've never Gremlins. seen Gremlins? <laughs> I've never seen Gremlins. Really? Uh, that, that one, it, other, like other, like bigger time movies that, that wouldn't surprise me, but Gremlins, like that's, yeah. I mean, that, that's a, that's a, I, I would say, th- I would say that falls under the cult classic. I mean, that has midnight showings. Yeah, and no, I, I know, I know that that's why I, uh, uh, I hoped that you would just skip to me and move on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this really takes away your credibility as you know mm-hmm. the host of your podcast and your Facebook group. I think you may you may yeah. have to you may have to cede your your seat to whoever your VP is. Yeah, just uh, Nixon out on out of here. Just yeah. <laughs> I am not a crook. I have Gremlins. seen Gremlins. Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't have those kind of jowls, but yeah. <laughs> Um, Riddled with flabbergasted. But you know what? Uh, as soon as we finish recording it, I'll I will watch Scribblings. You should check it out, man. I th- I think I think you'd like it. At I'll least the first one. Second okay. one was good too. But. Now a movie that cannot be questioned about being a Christmas movie okay. is Ernest Saves Christmas. <laughs> well, like Ian said, it has Christmas in the title, yep. so it has to it has to be okay. considered a Christmas. So our movie. challenge is to find one that doesn't have Christmas. In the title. If we can find one before the podcast is over, then I'm I'm all for talking about okay. it. But I don't Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street does not have Christmas in the title. But it's a it's about Santa Claus, and Santa Claus is directly tied to Christmas. Yeah, so it's that's a Christmas that's... movie, right? Oh, so what do you? Are we trying to find? <laughs> no, <laughs> Gary, four to no, nothing, no, dude. No, you handed your own ass to you. No, nope. uh, I'm. <laughs> I found a movie that didn't have Christmas in the title that was about Christmas. That's what the challenge was, right? No, the oh, challenge was I, to find I, a movie. I've seen movies, find, by the way. <laughs> to, to find a find a movie that has Christmas in the title that's not about Christmas. Oh, or that doesn't, and that the main point is not about Christmas. The story can't go on without okay. Christmas being. I mean, you you could probably we could easily find that. Yeah, it's a Wonderful Life. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I want to bring up though, because I mean, I, I know what side I'm on for this one, but it's a Wonderful Life. Is is that a Christmas movie? Yes. Okay. Why? Why is it a Christmas movie? Uh, well, give, I, give, I I think... Give more backstory s- for people that haven't seen it. This is one of the older... So if, if people... I do come across people in our age group that have not seen this, and I'm like, okay, really? I mean, it's it's a pretty old one. I mean, it's famous, but, you know, fine. I'll, I'll give it to people that haven't seen it. Um, but why? Yeah, so uh, did you want me to tell the backstory of it? Yeah, or? give a quick okay. synopsis So of it. basically, um, Jimmy Stewart's character, uh, George Banks, I think? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Um, he, uh, he he feels Bailey, like Bailey, not Bailey, Banks. George Bailey. Banks is from Mary Poppins. Okay, yeah. dang it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Banks. All right, uh, Mr. Banks. Uh, he works at a bank, though. So he does. Um, well, it's a building in Bailey <laughs> Brothers building and loan. It's an old school bank. Yeah. Um, same so thing. anyway, it, it's it's uh, 
you know, the, the bank goes bust uh, and, like, uh, almost goes bust. And uh, they lose a lot of money that they needed. And so um, uh, Jimmy Stewart's character is really depressed. And he's thinking about killing himself on Christmas Eve. And uh, an angel Clarence comes down and uh, shows him what, uh, you know, the value of his life um, right. and w- why he should stay there um, and, and continue to live. Right. Uh, and I think that it's a really, you know, it not only does it take place on Christmas, but right. um, it's got a lot of uh, themes that are indicative of Christmas. You have uh, redemption, um, you know, you have, uh, you know, uh, a lot more of the religious themes that you don't have in a lot of the other movies we've been talking about. So I think that's a solid, solid yes for Christmas movie. Okay. Um, Neil? I would say it's a Christmas movie. I don't watch it every year, but I know a lot of people. Uh, Ian, I mean, it, and it sounded like this is one you had seen. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it comes up every every thing. I haven't seen it in a good decade, but sure. yeah. Um, I mean, sure. I, I I don't really have an opinion one way or the other on this one. All right. Um, pain pains me to say. Um, I am, and I'm not disagreeing to just play devil's advocate and get more listeners because it's not like it's been working anyways um <laughs> there you go johnny <laughs> that's positive the spi- attitude that's the spirit old boy um <laughs> no I, I and i'm gonna tell you why it doesn't necessarily have to be a christmas film if you go back and you watch the movie yes the very end does take place on christmas if you took christmas out and did it on new year's it would make sense they actually sing um when you think of when you think of new year's songs to sing on years what do you what do you think of odd lang syne oh lang syne okay yeah. that is actually the only full song they sing in the entire movie, and it's sung at the end, mm-hmm. okay? So if you wanted to take this and make it a New Year's thing, you could easily. You could easily take Christmas out of this. If you go back and you look at the majority of the film, um, the angels that are kind of narrating George's life up until that point, they talk about his life over the last 30-some-odd years, and they don't just focus on Christmas. He's not. He doesn't say to... Uh, Clarence. Uh, Clarence, thank you. Uh, he doesn't, Gabriel doesn't say, or Joseph, excuse me, Joseph doesn't say, head on down to earth on Christmas. It's Christmas, so we have to help him out. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, he doesn't say that at any point. You know, he could just be like, it's New Year's. It's the turning of the clock. Everyone gets a fresh new start. Or, you know, like someone like, uh, like, like you, I think you had told me a while back, you do your, uh, your New Year's, new year's resolutions, resolutions on my birthday. On your birthday. Yeah. You could do it on a birthday because maybe for you personally, yeah. that would be a time to change over. So while I do watch It's a Wonderful Life every Christmas Eve without fail since I was a kid, I don't necessarily think Christmas is a strong enough aspect of that movie to warrant it being just a Christmas movie. I think it would still be a completely strong film if you chose another holiday to do it on. Yeah. Being birthday or New Year's. Yeah, I mean... Uh... There, there are lots of movies like that where uh, uh, the characters get a chance to go back and uh, correct something that went wrong. Right. Um, like Mr. Destiny is one that I can think of. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't think I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, it's one that came out in the 80s with uh, Jim Belushi. Oh, okay. James. Which one's the one still alive? James. Jim. James. Yeah. Jim. Okay. Yeah, anyway, you, yeah, the Belushi get, brother. Um, yeah, one of the Belushi brothers. Anyway, it was a really great movie, but it was very much the same. He gets to go back and make a, a change in his life. Um, and it wasn't on Christmas. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, so I, cause then, uh, if we bring that up, we had, we had talked about, uh, Christmas Carol earlier. Okay. So time travel movie, another time travel movie, another, another paradox film. Um, Christmas Carol, which Scrooged that the Bill Murray film, right. uh, it, which was, was taken from that, from the Charles Dickens novel. Yeah. And, um, I also know, feel Reagan like headed. you probably just, uh, mentioned Neil's pick for this week. Just putting that out there. It's very possible. Neil does love that. Love that. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Neil does love Bill Murray. Yep. That's true. Between that and the Ernest saves Christmas. I think Neil's like, <laughs> fuck you guys. Yes. I'm sure out of all the <laughs> films to pick to recommend our listeners to, to watch Neil picked Ernest saves Christmas. I'm sure. We'll find out, I guess. I guess we will. I guess if you want to find out now, skip ahead to 6722. Stop making up time. You're not going to edit it to <laughs> no, do that. No, There's no not. way you're going to. You don't have the that. patience for that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You, you had brought up, Gary, you had brought up A Christmas Carol earlier. Is, mm-hmm. is that one that, so is that one that has to fall on Christmas? Is it, you know, I mean, it's a Christmas 
story, technically. I mean, you know, right. that's why Dickens wrote it. So it, it's interesting because, like, in terms of, like, the actual narrative, I would say, no, it doesn't have to necessarily fall on Christmas. But mm-hmm. I think in terms of uh, the way it's impacted and become part of our culture, it is a Christmas story. Yeah. I, I think that that, like a lot of the other Christmas stories, have woven themselves into our culture. Like, It's a Wonderful Life. And and I, I honestly, I, I would agree with you guys. Yeah. yeah, It's a Wonderful Life. To me personally, if we're going off, we're adding the you know the subjective reasoning as as a variable in this in the equation for it. Yeah, of course, I would I would uh, as myself I would say that it's a Christmas film. I'm just saying that you it is one of those films that if you took Christmas out, it could still be just as powerful of a film. Yeah, set on another date. Right. So, um, yeah. I, so I don't I don't know. Um, do you guys have any other any other films that pop into your head? Um, that you you know that you might not consider to be a Christmas film if you took that aspect out. Hmm. I mean, you know, the, I, I, I had, I had gone and I had gone and looked at some other lists. Um, I had come across some that I kind of agreed with the, the, the ones that were, I mean, home alone, you know, that could happen at any time. <sighs> oh yeah. I don't know why man, I didn't maybe, think about home alone. I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, the reason that it worked, the reason that they were so scatterbrained because it was because it was the holidays. Right. Maybe on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving yeah. but that would be the only other holiday or, or, or day. Or There's... just like a summer vacation. Yeah. You could see like mm-hmm. kind of griswold like, hey, we're going to go to to the Grand Canyon for the 4th of July and yeah. we leave our kid behind. But, but then again, the whole, the whole thing about it is that he learns the meaning of Christmas and giving and... That's also yeah. a good point. Ian. He can That's learn really the meaning point. of freedom in America on the Fourth of July. <laughs> what? <laughs> that would be a completely That's different movie. Though. Yeah, he finds That's his dad's true. gun and defends his house. Oh my Hell God. yeah! yeah that, that that home, home freedom, <laughs> home defense, <laughs> home defense. That, 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 that would have been good uh, for Home Alone too. Lost in New York instead of like, another Christmas. It could have been Fourth of July. That would have worked. I think. Right. Yeah. I'm never home alone with my friends Smith and Wesson. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think it's it's a lot harder with those type of films though especially like a home alone one because like you guys were saying not only did it happen on christmas or happen around christmas the entire movie happened around christmas and there's no flashbacks there's no hey there's two months before during thanksgiving or halloween or another time of year like this is all within a few days right before Christmas on and then on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Mm. And you have, I mean, Heart, Heart Carol of the Bells, um, Carol of the Bells, Jingle Bell Rock, um, they, there's Santa, there's buying presents. There's scenes that are written around Christmas activities. Mm-hmm. So I think that would be harder. I think if you took the Christmas aspect out, it yeah, I think it would change it drastically. I don't know if you could do that and it'd still be the same movie. I mean, it would, it would change some of the tone, but I, I think overall then integrity of the movie would stay the same the integrity of the movie might stay the same but the plot would change because i mean like i like i was saying scenes like an entire scenes were written around those activities entire scenes yeah. were written around a christmas party decorating the house buying presents sitting on santa's lap like those are scenes those are like minutes long you know like that's uh, it's just a lot of dialogue to change i don't know um but uh yeah i see what you mean um some some that I came across that were that that were interesting ones. Um, the holiday. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. Um, as a Jack Black, uh, Cameron Diaz, Jude Law, and um, Kate Winslet, and Cameron Diaz and Kate Winslet switch houses for the holidays uh, for like a month. It was like a so uh, Cameron Diaz goes to England and she stays in the cottage that Kate Winslet lives in, and the Kate Winslet comes and stays in her like L.A. mansion. Or oh. something, but it's based around Christmas. Um, and while in route to America, Kate Winslet like her boat crashes. Yeah. Okay. If she took right. yeah. a boat because it's you know the two thousands, so taking a oh, boat across right. the Atlantic I, I is know when very common. Place, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Oh. Um, I think yeah that one that one easily. I mean that one easily. I wouldn't consider that really a Christmas movie outside of it just saying the holiday. I mean it could be a, a, a win- like yeah. like you guys had said a summer holiday. Yeah. You know. Um, you got uh, Krampus. Krampus. That uh, horror movie that came out a couple but years Krampus ago. Krampus is that's 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 not even that's not even that's not made up. That's like an old school German folktale. Like you can tell it's German because it's terrifying for children. <laughs> oh my god, that movie actually. We saw that, and Ian Neil. I don't know if you guys ever saw Krampus, the the remake that came out like in 2015, 2016. I don't think so. Um, and it's just about basically the basically it's about um 
Santa comes and gives gifts to those that were nice, and Krampus comes and takes things away from those that were naughty. And this entire family. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, and it was kind of a comedy at the beginning. It had like, yeah, it, yeah. it was a definite tonal shift. Yeah, like, in the middle yeah, of it, like yeah. the first forty-five minutes, it was hilarious. Yes. Like it was, it was just one of those movies. So bad, it was good. Um, and it was just you saw like the demons that were trying to come and kill the family and stuff and take them to hell. Um, it was just funny how they were attacking them. And then halfway through it got really fucking dark and then just bad. Yeah. Not so bad. It was good. It no. just got, just kind of dragged. Yeah. You know, people are like getting their, their, their stomachs slit open, but mm. instead of it being like, I don't know, just the angles they used in the music, it was just com- a completely different tone from the yeah, first it, 45 it, minutes. It dropped off significantly. Yeah. Um, huh. so yeah, it's so. kind of like hereditary. Well, Jacob's not here, so oh, we, yeah, we can yeah. talk. We can talk okay. about it. Right. Ian, did you ever end up going and uh, and seeing Hereditary? No. Or, um, yeah, don't. Or Midsummer. You, I don't know, man. You might like those types of movies. I don't know. I'm not sure. You, you might. Um, and, uh, I, I uh, tagged you in that post that meme I made in my Facebook group. Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Um. So uh, I guess uh, another one that I had seen come across uh, was The Family Stone. If you guys have ever seen that one, it's Rachel uh, McAdams, Sarah Jessica Parker. That's got the ensemble cast. Yeah, it, right? Diane yeah. Keaton, yeah. Um, uh, Craig T. Nelson, mm-hmm. Luke Wilson, Dermot Mulroney, Claire Danes. Oh God, it's got it's a fantastic film. Uh, basically, a guy brings his really uptight girlfriend home for the holidays to meet the family. The family is all very eccentric and over the top and goofy, and she just does not fit in well at all. And so it's about them basically putting her through the ringer and making fun of her. Um, and then in the end, it all works out. But the entire movie is based at Christmas. But I don't know, with that one, yeah, I think you could you could just take, once again, take yeah. the Christmas element out of it. It could be it. Grandma's birthday. It could Everybody be got grandma. together. It really yeah. could. It could be a weekend. Yeah. It could just be spring break. Weekend at Bernie's. We could, yeah, might as well. Instead of Family Stone, we could have just watched Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah. That's a great movie. Yeah. Not Christmas, though. But it could have been Christmas. They should do another weekend with Bernie's and have just like a really desiccated corpse since it's been like 30 years now <laughs> what do they and they try to dress it up as when that be like <laughs> skins falling off try to dress it up as Krampus. that would make sense yeah um that's more of a halloween one. Oh man uh yeah I, I you know i can't think of i can't think of any other ones that would that would be on there oh little women little women was on there i, I think somebody on this podcast was in little women am i not am i correct in that oh his internet dropped. Oh, Neil dropped. Oh, Neil dropped. Oh, no. no, we'll bring her back later. Oh. We're gonna tell this. We're gonna tell this story though. Yeah, <laughs> Neil loves loves telling it. Uh, Gary, I'll let you tell the story since you brought it up. Uh, so back in high school, uh, we were um, in theater. Uh, Johnny, Neil, and I together. And uh, Neil was cast um, his senior year, I believe, um, as uh, the dad in Little Women. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with Little Women, the dad is a very bit part yeah very uh, small very very small, small very small part and so basically all neil was able to do was at the very end of the uh the play come in and say girls or something yeah he said merry christmas merry, my yeah. dears yep. and they came and hugged him and that was it there's the only the only part yep. now in the actual book and in the actual play the father is he's more he i wouldn't say he's he's not prevalent in the script he's not everywhere he doesn't right. have a ton of lines but he is an actual figure that has more dialogue but i will say uh with neil's line that did make that a christmas uh christmas uh oh, get play the fuck out of here. i'm just saying you know <laughs> look man this little women it takes place over a span of years and you know almost you know i think almost a decade i think when it's all said and done um, <laughs> that that is one that is just most certainly uh, that's just, it's most certainly not a Christmas film. You know, it's one of those movies that we talk about, you know, now if you took, if you took something like another one that I saw come up a lot, just as a famous Christmas mo- movie, the nightmare before Christmas, I was just about to bring that up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, Ian, what do you think about that? I mean, that's, 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 a well, I, again, Christmas is in the title. Sure. And, um, yeah, if you take that out, then there's no plot. It's just Jack Sellington just being depressed and the, the movie's over. <laughs> I mean, essentially, dude. I mean, it because it's also it's one of those it's one of those rare combos because it's also yeah. a Halloween film, technically. Definitely. Um, because they're in Halloween Town and then they kidnap Santa. But yeah, I mean, if you, you there's there's uh, no there's 
Yeah, you if you take Christmas out of it, then it's just a it's a movie about Halloween Town and they capture a fat old dude. Like it's it's a movie about kidnapping. It's taken essentially just you know with Chris Kringle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so i yeah that's definitely a christmas but it, it's definitely both it, it's a good hybrid yeah oh yeah it, it, you, you watch it on halloween and then you watch it on christmas yeah yeah um i had heard uh some things about edward scissorhands um uh, that mm, one yeah a lot of tim burke movies for sure yeah a couple yeah a fair amount of Burke, but, once again. but i think that's the thing i think nightmare before christmas is a little different just because like you said it has christmas in the title and you know it, it the entire story is predicated on what happens next that's the, with plot. the plot christmas. is based on christmas right right uh edward scissorhands it's just a it's a sub it's a it's not even a subplot yeah. it just happens to be that there's scenes from christmas in there yeah good yeah good point good point yeah. uh what, what do you think about jingle all the way Jingle all the way. I actually put that cookie down. Put the cookie down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna g- I'm gonna deck your halls, Mister. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's funny. I was actually watching that the other day. What happened to Sinbad? I'm so sad that we haven't seen Sinbad in a movie or anything in the last. I, I like how the last thing we've seen from him was on. Oh, um, uh, it's called Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and he's yes. in the. <laughs> he's in the <laughs> rehab. Who's who's and he had um who's the guy from uh was it Matchbox Twenty? Uh, yeah, yeah. Rob Thomas. Rob Rob Thomas, Thomas yeah. Him and Rob Thomas and they're like a gang and they're just yeah, picking they're on just like poor boys. Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that was. So oh, weird. speaking of which, that they made a Christmas movie, the Always Sunny Christmas. Did they? I didn't. Yeah, you didn't know that. How did I not hear about that? I that's yeah. literally one. Of I, my I mean, it, it, was, it wasn't in theaters or anything. It was pretty right. much just. Uh, a two hour or 90 minute long episode basically but um yeah i think they it, it went to dvd okay and so I mean, it's not an yeah. episode it's an actual like just i mean it's a it's a kind of is but anyway um yeah the, uh it's about christmas and the, each of the characters are doing their own christmas things um frank takes everything that dennis and d wanted for christmas and buys it oh. for himself uh like uh, he like dennis always wanted a lamborghini so frank bought a lamborghini for himself and crashed it and then like goes into a coma and has a dream about christmas miracles and whatnot i could but... I could, yeah and they hire his old business partner to to yeah. play the the ghost of of christmas yeah yeah exactly uh, and uh the intro yeah yeah um charlie goes to a santa a mall santa and sits on his lap and That's asks him right. if he fucked and, his mom and every every christmas every christmas the mall santas would come over and then we slowly find out his mom was a hooker okay that's <laughs> oh, right oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought that was like two episodes back to back, though. I didn't remember it being a movie. Well, yeah, that's that's basically what it was, but it came out first as a DVD. Oh, okay. and then I didn't just know that. like a lot of TV shows do that. Like, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, Jingle All the Way. I, I mean, I, I, you would have to. I think it's definitely a Christmas movie. It'd only be only for the fact that you see them going after this one toy that everybody had i mean the, the story is based around them fighting for this one turbo man action figure and if they don't get it their sons will be disappointed on christmas and the reason they can't find it is because it's out of stock due to it being christmas mm-hmm. and it being such a hot toy um i mean yeah i think that one's does does big take place on christmas i don't remember if big does trading places does you've got mail's got a lot of christmas scenes you've got mail it. has some christmas scenes i wouldn't consider either of those holiday films nor would i consider big one <laughs> Um, Beauty and the Beast that takes place over yeah, but Christmas. We're, we're we're straying. We're, we're straying. Really, we're okay. really, we're reaching. We're really pushing so the envelope here. With I, the... I did some research, uh, and uh, okay. the, the only movie I could find uh, that had Christmas in the title was okay. uh, a movie about Christmas Island, which is a tropical island. Yeah, and uh, is it spelled the same way? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there is the one movie I, we were able to find. So in your face, Ian. Yeah. Had your ass handed to you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Christmas Island, and it came out in 2017. Who's in it? Uh, nobody you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> is it a movie so bad it's good? Could we watch it for one of, uh, an episode for Ian's podcast? You 
Uh, probably could. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll take your word for it, man. I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It'll be new to all of us. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Um, that was great. Great fun. Great fun. Um, cool. Well, I mean, I, I, I think that's unless anybody, I don't think any, I don't think we can think of any other ones. That... Well, uh, are, are we going to actual, are we going to segue into actual Christmas movies or, or like it's just like, cause I have one that's definitely a Christmas movie. Like, sure. No, yeah. No, we, no. we can segue into actual Christmas movies. I don't want to go into like our top five of greatest yeah. Christmas movies of all time. That'll be another episode for this month, but yeah, go ahead. What's uh, what's one you got. Bad Santa. Okay. Bad Santa. Yeah. 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 So, you, so you, you have people telling you it's not a Christmas movie, even though it is? No, no, not at all. I was, I was just wondering. I was waiting for us to actually talk about good Christmas or uh, not good, but actual Christmas movies. So for sure. Um, for sure okay. Yeah, I mean, um, so if we're on that topic now, then then Bad Santa for sure. OK, yeah, that'd be the old recommendation there. Uh, I think we're going to wait to talk about the best Christmas movies of all time. I think that's going to be another episode, Uh, Um, but we will have you back for that. Obviously Um, we'll probably do that one this, uh, this week for sure. Um, I know we tried to, we tried to get our Halloween ones out, but no, 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 it's totally okay. Um, But anyways, so let's go ahead and I do want to give our recommendations for the week. And then uh, Ian, I want you to plug your podcast and the new format you got going on for your new show. That's coming out. Uh, All right. Fancy VR hologram stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, so Ian, what what do you got for your recommendation? Uh, one or two holiday recommendations for our listeners at home. What should they be watching on the streaming services this well, holiday? Shit, I guess I'll talk about Bad Santa. Oh <laughs> yeah, there okay, you go, baby. Oh uh, right. yeah, uh, that is it's brilliant. It's it's just the, this mall Santa who just hates his life and. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he's like a traveling he, uh, Santa because he doesn't he like travel across the country doing like hit jobs. Oh, with yeah, his, his, yeah, that's, uh, that's the uh, person that's the friend. Thing, it turns out that <laughs> he's artists. actually working underground to uh, once they close for Christmas, he robs right. them, right? And then he goes into the next town and so far hasn't been caught until he gets caught by Bernie Mac. That's right. Spoiler alert, <laughs> oh, oh, it came out in the early 2000s. If you haven't seen it yet, it's your own fault. <laughs> Uh, Jeez, it is great. It's, I love that movie so much. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Like, despite, like, for, forget Christmas. It's one of the best movies ever made. It's, it's one of so the best fun. movies ever made. Jeez, that's, that is that's a statement. that's quite a statement, man. Yeah. Why do you think it's one of the best I mean, movies ever made? That's I'm interested to hear this. I mean, it's definitely very well made and scripted. Like the script is is great, and uh, like I I've seen it like twenty times, and I still laugh so hard yeah. at so, some of the jokes. It's a funny movie, and uh, yeah, it's just yeah, it's, it's such a dark comedy, and uh, yeah, it's it's just so like there's nothing bad about it. like there, there's no not nothing you could. That's bad oh, about yeah, it. Oh yeah, absolutely. I if, guess. if no, no, that no, to- totally. If you like, if if you're somebody that has a crass sense of humor, I mean, there's yeah, there's probably I no. Mean, it's definitely a very dark comedy. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's no there's no holiday movie in general. I can think of other comedies that are on the same line as Bad Santa, but there's no holiday movie that has that type of that. That's it's that good of it's that good type of crass humor for a holiday film. You know, I mean, I guess uh, Scrooged. Mm-hmm kind of um yeah and that, that, have that's, you seen that in a while that's actually i was watching it last christmas it's a lot darker than i remember like, it's I mean, some of the it's, jokes they're going through yeah yeah i was doing a staple lot antlers on a mouse's head <laughs> <laughs> horrible um i think the the night before do you remember that this one with seth rogan and anthony mckee yes and yeah, um yeah. joseph gordon lovett mm-hmm. um that that one was kind of up that alley um, but yeah, no, I think, I think for me, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I think bad Santa is, it's one of those movies when I pick my 25, it's typically one that I watch every year. Sometimes I'll, I'll substitute in something else. Okay. Um, but it's usually, it's usually on that list for me. Um, yeah. So uh, Gary, what about you? What, what should people be watching this holiday season? Uh, well, uh, for my pick, uh, for what movie you should be watching, uh, I definitely think that no holiday season is complete without uh, watching How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and I'm, of course, uh, referring to the 1970-something cartoon, right. and not the not anything else, just 
Watch the cartoon. <laughs> I really liked the Jim Carrey one. I'm not going to lie. I it, really did like the Jim Carrey Grinch. It it was not bad. It was not yeah. bad. But I think uh, if if you got to pick one, you're going to need you need to see the cartoon one. Well, sure. And it's, a uh, it's only about 35 minutes or so. It's so take, yeah. yeah. Read the or read the I mean read the book too. It's yeah. It, probably even shorter. If you can than read, read, do the book. If you can read, <laughs> yeah. if you're not illiterate. Yeah. If you're not a dumb dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, folks. If you can't read, that's totally okay. Uh, I I'll, I'll tutor you. <laughs> okay. You know? Five dollars a minute. Five dollars a minute. We'll Zoom, we'll Zoom call and teach you how to read. Um, <laughs> Johnny, what's your pick? <laughs> uh, God, you know what, man? Uh, my pick for this week. We're gonna have by the time Christmas Eve comes up, we'll probably have three or four episodes under our belt. So I will start off my picks for this holiday season with none other than one of the best, if not the best, Christmas movie of all time, Elf. Elf. Absolutely, Will Ferrell's Elf. I see that we um uh that is a tradition for V and I. We go to Alamo Draft Houses watch parties every Christmas, and we'll usually see a couple, but the one we never miss is Elf. We've been doing that for like four years now. Elf. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do, do, have, you, have you not seen Elf? Seen Elf. You don't, you're not a it's, big Elf fan, really. It, it's it's well, an okay movie. Yeah. It's one of Will. It's one of Will Ferrell's best films, and it That's is also the true. Quintus- <laughs> It is the quintessential holiday movie. No. Yes. Uh, no. Absolutely. No. And uh, what do you think of Elf? Be the top. I'm guy. definitely going to have to rewatch it because I haven't seen it since it came out. Oh. Uh, I mean, I loved it when it moved did. Moved to Portland, I... Ian. Just moved to Portland. Just do it. <laughs> it's too popular for me to watch. <laughs> Let me go get some Starbucks oh, get chai, chai latte. Gary, you sit on a throne that. of lies. A throne of lies. A throne of lies. lies. Gary's Gary is a, is, uh, Gary's a uh, listen, guys. Gary is a cotton-headed ninny muggins. Yep. Okay. Yep. And Gary doesn't you can't even remember. use that language here, sir. He's a cotton-headed ninny muggins. You can't use that language. Oh, get that out of here, Gary. I hate you so much. Okay. I'm doing this podcast now with everyone but you. Excellent. And then you still have to edit it. God damn it! <laughs> Son of a, why did I sign up for this? Uh. Um, and we'll, we'll hold. I, I, I am assuming we. We know what Neil's pick would have been for this week, but we're gonna hold. Okay. We're gonna let him. He can do two or three next week. Um, uh, his his after his me. Was... That way, I can really screw him over. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. So we'll let Gary start. Yep. And then I'll go. And then Ian goes. Yep. And then Neil goes last. All right. Perfect. That's the order. The order we've decided a week before. Neil, do you agree? Okay. Good. Good. Perfect. Good. Si- <laughs> be silent if it's yes. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> uh, so before we jump off, though, uh, let's go ahead and do some plugs. Uh, Ian. Uh, is uh, the host. I don't know if we did introductions. I had to step away at the beginning of the uh, night. No, 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 we're no yeah. introductions. So I- Ian has a currently currently has a podcast called Movies So Bad They're Good and then has a very popular Facebook group which is growing in popularity every day called Movies So Bad They're Good Midnight Cult Classics and Camp. Um, but Ian, you wanted to plug your new series that's coming out. So take it away. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, well, it's basically the same. Uh, here, the thing that's going on, the showrunner of the podcast, maybe so bad they're good. He is uh, he's retiring, basically. Um, he's still going to do his other podcast. Who's next? This is Seth I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Uh, but he, I mean, it, life's getting in the way. He he runs three different podcasts. He he does many I other re- things. I remember him talking about that when I when I guessed when I guest started on your last one. Yeah, he, he's very busy. So he's actually going to be going away from movies so bad they're good, and he's going to be handing it over to me. I mean, I'm I'm the the host of that one, but he's the basically the showrunner and editor. But I was thinking, actually, we're we're going to start over. So, okay. uh, but it's going to actually be a new podcast. It's the same podcast, but a new podcast. Are you changing and the name? Yes. You are changing so, the name. Okay. And it's no longer movie so bad dot 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 they're good. Now it's completely the same as the Facebook group, movie so bad they're good, comma, midnight cold classics and camp. So we're wow, we're you're, you're you're lengthening it. Yeah. Okay. That's a bold <laughs> yeah. strategy cotton. Well, Let's I'm getting rid of the dot 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 part. So even though it's longer, it's probably gonna be easier, hopefully. And um, yeah, so we're, we're going to be covering the whole thing, not just the bad movies, but also the good cult movies and the midnight yeah. classics, like the the old 70s grindhouse exploitation stuff. Fun. You know, the really cool thing about that, and when you had talked about possibly doing a dazed and confused episode, if you're doing stuff that were I mean, if you talk about 
midnight cult classics and camp. I mean, you're looking at Richard Linklater, Robert Rodriguez, even Tarantino. Oh, yeah, a lot of those movies were shot here in Central Texas. Yeah. And I guarantee you, if you wanted to bring on a guest that worked on it in some aspect, I guarantee you we could find somebody per episode. That would be that, cool. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah that would um, be great. I don't know what they do. I don't know if you'd be like a big-named actor or anything, but I guarantee you, you could probably find at least... Um, one per, I was telling you that, um, uh, BJ, for those of you that have listened to our other podcast, we had a podcast on cinematography, uh, and, uh, our good friend BJ Lou Allen, who's a local, uh, director, photographer and gaffer. A legend, here. really. The legend, the yeah. man, the myth, the yes. legend, BJ Lou Allen. BJ. I'm going to tag him in this episode because we mentioned his name. Um, his dad has, has actually been a, uh, a, a gaffer and a grip in central Texas for the last f- almost four 35 years, 40 years, I think. Okay. Um, his name's Bobby, and he, I know that he, I'm pretty sure he worked on Dazed and Confused. Uh, oh, okay. They did, they did Friday Night Lights. Uh, he's done a couple other things. Anyways, but so there are people out there. So yeah, that's, that's, that's good that you guys are opening that up. We're actually in, you know, outside of being in LA or New York, um, that this is a pretty good city to be in to, to find somebody that might want to jump on for an episode. Yeah, so, that, yeah, I mean, that would cool. be great. Uh, yeah, so because I've always wanted to, you know, review movies like that. Definitely Days Confused because, you know, it, growing up in Austin, it, it means a lot to me because I've been to those places, but I can't cover that in the movie so bad as good because it's not yeah. maybe so bad as good, but it is a cult exactly. classic. Oh, so, sure. yeah. Um, so, depending on when this episode is released, uh, our last episode for the old podcast is in december is going to be like mid-december and then okay. the new one will should start up first week of january so new year new podcast all right oh, man so it okay. will actually be it'll be the same podcast but different a different nice, name different platform hey man well all we're right. looking forward to it looking to looking to yeah. have and, some episodes uh, from you definitely guys look forward and, to bringing you guys in on it absolutely man I'm totally jumping on some of those um Cool. All right. Well, everybody, um, for all of us here at I Don't Give a Flick, uh, I'm Johnny. I'm Gary. And And I'm Neil. (laughs) (laughs) Happy holidays, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to Lead Feather Productions' podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Lead Feather production. Copyright Lead Feather Productions 2020.